Few design changes have occurred in displacement ships for several decades, despite the fact that their performance is degraded by heavy seas, particularly ships of smaller tonnages. This is a five foot long model of a ship that should provide vessels ranging from 200 to 10,000 tons, sufficient stabilization to handle aircraft in heavy seas. It is a semi-submerged ship. Two torpedo shaped hulls support a platform above water on four vertical struts. A series of 500 tests have been conducted to determine the inherent stability and seaworthiness of the design. Comparative data was obtained using a standard ship model having approximately the same displacement. In most of the tests, the swells generated in the tank simulated 20-foot waves if scaled to a 5,000-ton ship. Here, the models were allowed to move freely. The semi-submerged model remains relatively stable while the conventional ship quickly reaches roll resonance. When the semi-submerged model turned broadside in the waves, it still remained stable, demonstrating that it is well damped in all respects. In this test, the model was held at rest, restrained in yaw, but free to heave, pitch, and roll. Tests like this provided data on seaworthiness. In other tests, the model was fully restrained and towed by an instrumented carriage down the 300-foot tank to obtain measurements of the boat's lifting force, pitching moment, and drag force. Many variables were introduced, such as different sea states, speeds, tow directions, different drafts, and changes in pitch and yaw angle. The objective was to determine whether automatic control surfaces would keep the ship level in heavy seas. In a third series of tests, the model was towed by means of wires attached to the submerged noses to simulate the thrust line of the ship. The model was free to heave and pitch. In head seas, the platform does not touch the water and remains relatively stable. Following seas produced more motion. Larger waves probably would hit the platform. However, a control system would prevent this from happening. Here, the conventional model, photographed in real time, is simulating a speed of 15 knots in 20-foot waves. This is prototype time, where the motion has been slowed by a factor of seven to show how an actual 5,000-ton destroyer behaves in 20-foot waves at 15 knots. And here is the semi-submerged model, photographed in prototype time under the same test conditions. The main objectives of the 500 tests were to explore the basic stability and seaworthiness of the ship concept and to determine the control forces required to provide level flight. In this demonstration, where the model is manually deflected, its rapid recovery clearly shows it to be well damped in all modes. Still another demonstration of the ship's stability is shown here, where the model is being towed at a relatively fast clip. To obtain more information on the ship's seaworthiness and maneuverability, a self-propelled radio-controlled model was constructed. It was equipped with two paired rudders, a stabilizing fin, which in the prototype ship will have control flaps, two electric motors, which could be independently controlled, and two canard control fins positioned in a protected area near the noses of the submerged hulls. These two control surfaces, when moved in unison, induce a pitching action and a roll action when moved in opposite directions. After extensive testing in the tow tank, 
The model was placed in the bay at San Diego, where its movement would be unrestricted. Here the model is reacting to deflections of the canards. First, a pitching action is deliberately induced. And now, roll. When canards are applied to counter the effects of rough water, it is expected that near level flight will result. The purpose of the runs in the bay was to study the model's turning characteristics, its performance at angles to waves, and its general dynamic behavior. The canard control fins were not used in this and following runs. It was found that the model has a natural tendency to bank in turns without canard controls. It was also found that the model performed well at all angles to waves. Its greatest movement occurred in a following sea condition. The model deck is scaled to represent a height of 20 feet. Thus, these waves simulate waves 20 to 30 feet high. Because of the model's strong response to control, it is expected that near-level flight up through Sea State 7 can be provided. Ships of this type, ranging from 200 to 10,000 tons, would serve the Navy well as cruise missile carriers, ASW and surveillance ships, sonar platforms, air-capable ships, and oceanic research vessels. The design is so...